Hey everyone, here's another video on my 75 gallon reef tank build. Uh, for my starting off uh, this video, I'm going to cover most of the plumbing and uh, the future videos I'm going to go ahead with the water change and the, adding the water to it and uh, how to level the system and also going on with uh, how to cycle a tank from day one to the end of the cycle with the ammonia, the nitrites and the nitrate and the whole procedure of uh, how to cycle a reef tank. So the whole tank is a uh, Euro braced, uh, the new style that I have on. From my previous previous video, as you can see, um, I did a, a background paint on the glass, and now you can see the paint is all dried and all done. It is crystal clear. Okay, very nicely set up. I'm really happy with the results. Um, I also have my overflow silicone. Uh, I gave it about two days of curing time. That's more than 48 hours. Lock lines all installed. Uh, I had to break two of the little uh, grooves there to, to fit the lock line. I was actually going to drill it to the side, but uh, I'm trying to eliminate any drilling I can for the time being. As you can see, the lock line is installed right about there. Okay, it's, uh, it's a three-quarter inch lock line. I could have gone half an inch, but what happens is uh, I'm restricting the flow on the pump at the bottom. Um, also, here we go at the sump. I am starting to fill the water now slowly, slowly. And I'm gonna do a. I'm gonna fill the water in the sump first, and then just do a quick test on the pump. It's already been tested, but I always want to make a, a another test before I fill the top tank. Um, right at the back there, you do have uh, the background painted in the plasti dip, and the reason for that paint is because uh, I don't want uh, when the light's penetrating down there. I don't want it to the light to penetrate along the sides or into the return or the sump, uh, the protein skimmer area. That's just because yeah, you, the less light you have going towards the return pump, the, the less chances for algae and diatoms, anything to grow along the pump and that's the last thing you want. That creates more maintenance for your pump and uh, in this hobby you try to eliminate as much as maintenance as you can but still having the proper equipment in your tank. So with the sump, there's three compartments. The first one there with the white PVC going down um, is going to have the protein skimmer in the future. Second is a refugium area. I'm going to probably have Miracle Mud down there. And then the last is a pump. Um, this one here, it's a, it's a Panworld Pump 30PX or PX30. Somewhere along those lines. It's a small pump. Uh, it's only rated for about 300 gallon guys. Uh, some of you will disagree and say, heck, the pump is way too small, you can't have that. Yes, you are right. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I want to try a new method here. Everybody says you got to have a 10 time turnover of the tank, the volume of your tank with the pump. So, it's again, what I'm supposed to have is average about, say, a 1,000 gallon per hour pump, anywhere from 1,000 to 600 to 1,000. But I'm going to reduce the flow rate uh, from 10 times to maybe 2 times and the reason for this is because what I want to do when you have a gal when you when you have a turnover rate for more at 10 times per tank volume plus what happens is a protein skimmer will not pick up most of the nutrients that it needs to suck out of the water the water, because of the flow in the sump, it bypasses it very quick and along with it, uh, even all the, the microalgae I'm going to have in there, uh, it's going to bypass it. The algae is not going to have enough absorption time. So the pump here is external built for now. And the reason why I left with this because I did have the pump. I'm trying to eliminate the cost right now. I'm trying to just save some money. And with this, if I need to put a secondary pump in the future or soon, I, God knows whenever that happens, um, I'll put a, an Eheim internal pump, submersible pump and uh, run a Y fitting towards that right there, the three quarter inch uh, outlet and uh, we'll go from there, two pumps, one for backup I guess and one uh, a primary. But starting with the pump at the bottom, so three quarters of an inch, a little advice for all you guys out there, anytime you do plumb, uh, plumb a fitting uh, from a hose to any type of barb fitting. Word of advice, get a boiling cup of water, boil it for about two to four minutes, submerge a pipe into the boiling water about inch and a half for about uh, say 30 seconds, 45 seconds, 
and then you slide that onto the barb. What that's going to do is it's going to slide on just like butter. You're going to have no problems with that. The heating is going to cause contraction and then when it goes onto the barb and then it cools down, the pipe contracts and locks in the complete seal and then you can put any type of uh, lock fitting onto it that you need. So going up, I'm going to take you right to the top of the tank and behind. I hope you guys can see this. Oh boy, it's kind of tough. Uh, sorry guys, I'm just going to reverse the camera a little bit. Uh, here you go. And so, that one fitting, the only L bracket I have is right on the tank. So again, I'm trying to eliminate the hard plumbing because when you do hard plumbing, there's going to be a lot of 90 degree elbows that you're going to have. Now the less 90 degree elbows you have, the less restriction that uh, your, your pump uh, has and uh, it doesn't cause back pressure or anything so it's only one 90 degree and the rest of it it comes out into my lock lines and then going down I have a one and a half inch tube another 90 degree elbow and that white tube goes down to the tank let me flip the phone over again goes down to the tank and again uh, that, that white pipe is a PVC flex tube that was purchased from Lowe's that's the only place that had it. Home Depot didn't have it. Uh, the Home Depot has a barb, uh, the braided wire. But anyways, uh, this was about four bucks a foot. It wasn't much at all. And I have a half inch, one and a half inch, uh, a ball valve there. Now with the ball valve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to restrict the flow to a certain percentage, so I don't have to put any Herbie style plumbing on the uh, the over inside the overflow or anything um, this is going to cause no bubbles no water or uh, sorry no air to get inside the tubing causing all that noise inside the sump at the bottom so I'm going to try it out test it out uh, it's going to work uh, if you look on any BRS's bulk reef supply videos they will show you that they will put a ball valve not for the the, the shutting method of when you want to maintain the tank but they put the ball valve so you don't have to put any Herbie style or any different types of um, plumbing inside the overflow for water air ratio that gets sucked into it causing all that gurgling noise and uh, I'll prove that to you guys once everything is running on the tank so that goes into there and obviously the cycle starts right back up and into my uh, pump once again uh, if you guys have any recommendations, please, I am open to it. Um, again, I'm basing all my research and expertise from that one and a half, two years of experience I had in my this tank in the beginning and to from a lot of uh, research that I've been doing reading on a daily basis on different types of systems and other people's mistakes and learning from them. But uh, once again, if you guys have any recommendations... Please feel free to comment or, or advise me certain things and I'll be more than open for your suggestions and, uh, and comments, obviously. And uh, please feel free to subscribe, okay? And uh, there you go. So that's uh, filling up with water. There you go. And now uh, that side just filled, so I'm just letting the water overflow and uh, we'll go from there. Hope you guys do like the tank so far. It's uh, it's turning out pretty good. I'm really happy with it. Um, oh, sorry. Going back to one thing. That pump is a 300 gallon per hour. Uh, what I was going to say about uh, the nutrients getting absorbed by the protein skimmer and, and taking much as water as possible with a slow rate is perfectly fine. And some of you will argue that there is not enough flow in the tank. Correct and incorrect. Um... To uh, substitute for the rest of the flow that I need inside the tank, I'm going to be putting a, a Vortec MP40 in the tank. Um, as some people say you can use two MP10s. Uh, now this glass here is a 3 8, uh, 3 8 thick. And the MP10 is um, their maximum allowance for manufacturer says uh, 3 8 was your max limit that you can use. Now, therefore I'm going to go ahead with the MP40 and have that uh, wave effect or flow 
inside the, the, the tank and that's gonna benefit me from uh, no nutrients building up near the rocks or anything and uh, the bottom tank is mainly for the algae absorption and the nutrients absorption uh, reducing my phosphates nitrates and everything so uh, that's the primary reason why I'm using that pump is a I have it lying around and B it's for having a lower uh, flow rate at the bottom and having a greater flow rate at the top of the tank okay so hope you guys do like it uh, once again rate comment subscribe and uh, we'll go from there stay tuned for the next video